Hey, this is Shane with BitBison, and uh, today I'm going to teach you how to create and test patterns using the Verbi9 toolkit. The first thing you want to do is go to the Unity Asset Store and uh, download the Verbi9 toolkit from it and extract, extract that into an empty Unity project. I've already done that over here, and this is what you should see. You should see the TVNT folder with three subfolders under it, standard assets, TVNT and TVNT samples. Um, you should also have, uh, I think, uh, most empty projects in Unity come with uh, uh, a new scene setup. You don't need the scene, so let's get started with the pattern creation. Click on the TVNT folder, the scenes subfolder, and click on pattern creator, the pattern creator scene and that should open up the pattern creator scene. It contains three objects, the main camera, the event system, and the TVNT object pool. These objects are required objects, so don't delete them. To create a pattern, what you need to do is look for the TVNT menu item up here. Now click on that, and then click on new pattern. This creates a pattern object in your project hierarchy. The pattern object should be selected as it comes in, but if it isn't, select it. And uh, if you are in the scene view, what you should see is a grid that represents the space in which you can place your level tiles. Now, if you don't know what a level tile is, don't bother about it much. Um, just think about it from the point of view that level tiles are the building blocks for your patterns, and patterns are the building blocks for your levels. So um, what you have here is a grid that represents the space where you can place your level tiles. Um, the width of the grid is controlled by a grid Z value, which can be edited if you go to the TVNT folder, scripts, the pattern setting file. Now, I'm not going to do that right now, but um, believe me when I tell you that there is a grid Z, grid X value in there, which controls the width of the pattern. The grid Z value is available to be edited from the pattern custom inspector over here on, on the pattern object. Uh, you can edit the grid Z which, which modifies the length of the pattern. But today I'm going to create a pattern which is seven level, level tiles long. And uh, now this arrow that goes from bottom to top is just used to indicate uh, which section of the pattern is the bottom of the pattern, which is the top of the pattern. And it also, uh, the way the camera is set up right now, indicates which side of the pattern is going to be facing the camera. So the side with the arrow is the side of the pattern that's going to be facing the camera. Now let's create uh, a simple pattern so that uh, we can get started with this tutorial. To create a simple pattern, you need to enable editing first. Select the level tile that you want to place. In this case, I'm going to place a ground tile and left click and drag on the grid and that will draw the level tile on the grid and here I'm drawing this ground tile all over the place. Now you don't have to bother about uh, placing multiple copies of a level tile uh, one on top of the other because uh, as long as this place solitary option is selected that's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to place a level tile on top of another level tile. So I place the ground tile, uh, ground down. Let me place the wall on this side, and let me place a smaller wall on this side. Now we have our simple pattern created. Let's take a look at it by going into uh, the play mode. Let's click on play. That's our simple pattern. Now uh, let's let's get a character controller in there to move around. So to get my character controller in, I need to go to the TVNT samples folder, click on common, click on prefabs, characters, and that shadow looking thing is my character controller. Let me drop them into the scene view, and uh, I have my dude over there. Now if I click on play, I will have my character standing on my pattern with his idle animation going. If I click on the arrow keys on the keyboard, the character doesn't do anything. Now the character should be doing something when you click on the arrow keys, but in this case, the character doesn't do anything because his input has not been activated as yet. There is a reason for that, but in this case we want to 
activate the input. So in order to activate the input, let's click on the character object, look for his player controller script, look for the activate option down here and enable it. Now if we click the play button, what we now have is a character. If we click on the arrow keys, the character moves around. And he moves around till he bumps into a barrier and then he stops. This movement style is called uh, continuous walk. It's uh, similar to the movement style that you find in games like Quest Keeper. It's quite a lot of fun to play with. But it isn't the traditional movement style that you would identify with games like Crossy Road and whatnot. So to change to that movement style, let's just uncheck the play button, click on my character, locate the player controller script, look at the movement style option and change that to discrete jump. So now when I click on the play button up here, I should have my character moving uh, with a more recognizable style like Crossy Road. There we go, that's a little loud. I've got my character moving around. Uh, so yeah, I've got a simple pattern with my character moving around. Now let's make this pattern a little more interesting. Let's drop a few coins into the pattern. So I click the pattern object again. I enable editing. Now remember the play solitary option we, we talked about a little earlier? Now, in order to place a coin tile, I actually want to be able to place a level tile upon another level tile. So I need to uncheck the place solitary option. So I do that. I select the coin tile and I place a few coin tiles down. Uh, I don't want that coin tile over there. So control Z. I place the coin tile here, here, here. And then I disable the editing. I hit the play button and I've got my character jumping around, picking up coins. So now let's make it a little more interesting as well. Let's drop down a few barriers. Again, barriers are placed on top of the ground tile, so I want to uncheck the place solitary option. Select the barrier option, uh, barrier button rather, and place a few barriers down here. Let's drop a few of them in here. Let's drop one down there. Disable editing, click on the play button, and I have my character jumping around, picking up coins. He can't jump into the barrier because it's a barrier. Uh, but it's not bad. Now, let's add some more stuff in there. Let's drop a torch. In there again, uncheck the play solitary option. Let's drop a torch in there and hit the play button. We've got a few torches, and torches again are barriers. So the player can't jump into into them. You can jump around them. Now let's place a few weapons in here or obstacles that are dangerous to the player. For this tutorial I'll place a spike, maybe a spike and a fire tile in there. Uh, there are spikes, there are fire tiles, there are uh, moving platforms, there are uh, enemy spawn points, you got chopping blocks, you got all sorts of stuff and you can make even more stuff uh, with uh, by extending the level tile object but for today, we're going to place a few spikes in there. So let's select the spike option. Now, a spike is as big as a ground tile, so I can't place it on top of a ground tile because it kind of occupies the same space. So I need to delete a few of the ground tiles before I place the spike. And in order to delete a level tile, what I want to do is uh, enable editing, find the level tile I want to delete. When it's selected with the green box, I right click on it and I'm able to delete it. So I delete a few level tiles and I place spikes in there. Let me place a few fire tiles in there as well. 
Now if I disable editing and hit the play button, what I should have are these spikes and fire towers activated and working. Now all of them kind of pop up at the same time. If I want to change that to have them pop up at different times, what I do is I uncheck the play button, click on my pattern object, and select these last two these last two level tiles that were created, which are the fire tiles, and check fire on. Uh, let me select the spikes as well and turn one of them up. And what we have, if I turn the phase time of these to four as well, what we should have are uh, the spikes popping up at different times like that so this is just a basic introduction to the creation and testing of patterns now obviously obviously there's a lot more to cover and I will be covering those in later tutorials uh, the creation of level uh, tiles the creation of uh, the creation of a game using the pattern objects that you create and save. All that will be created, all that will be dealt with in, in further tutorials. But for this tutorial, you'll have learned how to create a pattern and to test it out.